Uh, today we celebrate the fifth Sunday after Easter. And of course, coming up next week is the great feast of Ascension Thursday, 40 days after our Lord's resurrection. And the three days leading up to that are, of course, the Rogation Days. Now, coming up uh, for the weekend of Pentecost, uh, of course, there's the annual Chartres pilgrimage from Paris to Chartres. And of course, I've had the grace of being on that about half a dozen times. But here in Western Australia, we're having our own little pilgrimage from St Anne's to the Divine Mercy Shrine in Chittering, a brand new church devoted to the Divine Mercy of our Lord. So we see the origin and spirit of processions in every age, that they have been there uh, to help us in our holy Catholic faith. Now, at Psalm 68, we hear the words, Hear me, O Lord, for thy mercy is kind. Hear us, O Lord, cries out many voices every day in prayer, petitioning God for help and for benefits. And with confidence we can do this, for our Lord says in today's Gospel, The Father loveth you, and if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. In the coming week, of course, the church ever anxious and solicitous for the spiritual welfare, but not just spiritual, temple as well, of her children, invites us to prayer, to unite in prayer, and thousands of voices exclaim, Hear us, O Lord, for thy mercy is kind. As we know, this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have the Rogation Days taken from the Latin regare, meaning to ask, petition God for a bountiful harvest and blessings upon the people. On Monday afternoon, we will have a Rogation Day Mass and procession singing the Litany of the Saints. And of course, this is a shorter sort of procession, of course, than a grand pilgrimage like the Chartres pilgrimage, which is many thousands of people over three days. But however short a procession or pilgrimage is, or procession really, uh, we would consider the origin of such processions and why and how we should participate in. Now what is the origin of all these processions? Processions were instituted in the Catholic Church to beg Almighty God to grant certain graces and benefits or to avert some evil or give thanks to some benefits already received. So through the ages in the Old Testament, we can read that processions took place. God commanded Josu to carry the Ark of Covenant around the city of Jericho for seven days with prayer and the sound of trumpets. King David carried it in solemn procession to Jerusalem, 2 Kings chapter 6, and Solomon, his son, carried it to the new temple that was built, 3 Kings chapter 8. Now, the early Christians, of course, did not make processions, really, because of the terrible persecution. However, mm -hmm. zealous Christians would visit the graves of the martyrs during the worst persecution to show veneration for them and bury the newly martyred. However, when the persecution ceased, processions began with great solemnity, that the relics of martyrs were removed from their graves and catacombs and carried to be reinterred into churches built in their honour. Processions then date in the Catholic Church at least 1,600 years. Then later, because of other calamities, as public acts of penance, processions would take place in which all the faithful would take part. Now, the three Rogation Days this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, before Ascension Thursday, were instituted in the fifth century. Dauphiny, a province of France, was struck by a terrible earthquake. The country was devastated, harvests were ruined, and savage beasts spread terror. Saint Mamertus, Bishop of Vienne, proclaimed a strict fast for three days, assembled his priests and people, and at their head went in solemn procession 
for three days to implore God through the intercession of the saints to avert from them the punishment that would have become most painful and almost undurable. Hence, we pray the litany of the saints on the procession during the Regation Days. And behold, because of this procession, God made all things good, withdrew the chastisements, and the people and the priests gave thanks to Almighty God. These processions were repeated every year in grateful remembrance of the deliverance from their calamity. And the custom spread so rapidly in 500 AD, it was adopted in France, Spain, Italy, and later on in Germany. Now these processions then are a preparation for the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. In procession, when the priest carries the Blessed Sacrament, as he will do uh, during the Feast of Corpus Christi in a few weeks, or carries a relic of the true cross, they truly resemble the apostles who on Ascension Thursday went out with our Lord and Master to Mount Olivet, where they took leave of him and he was taken out of their sight into heaven. So we are in good company when we participate in a procession. Now the other Regation Day is on the Feast of St Mark, the 25th of April, and its origin is some time before Pope Gregory the Great, who caused the custom to continue for the forgiveness of sins. In 590, a terrible plague hit Rome and killed thousands, amongst which were Pope Pelagius II. Pope Gregory obtained by means of a solemn procession on the Feast of St Mark the cessation of the plague. This procession then, made on this day, is to avert such evils as wars, famine and pestilence. Uh, in the ritual, of course, there's a special prayers and litany for a procession uh, to avert the plague. And of course, here at St Anne's, we did that procession uh, more than once in the light of what's been happening over the past two years. And please God, we have been blessed by our Lord by remaining faithful to him. At the same time, in a procession, we pray to God to bless the fields, increase prosperity, avert dangers and preserve from famine. God who clothes the flowers of the field and feeds the birds of the air would not forget to give his children our necessary needs and our food. So we see they're of ancient origin in the church's history. So that being said, in what spirit and disposition of mind must we participate in these processions? Knowing why they were formed, we must participate in the spirit of humility, contrition and penance, which manifests itself in the original Rogation days. As we know, we are all sinners and actually deserve punishment for our sins. But let us pray for mercy and pardon, for we do not know what the future brings. Days of prosperity may be replaced by days of adversity for our sanctification. And let us pray during the litany of the saints for mercy and pardon. As the litany says, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. O Lamb of God, spare us. And we must accompany any procession in the spirit of penance. He who lives in the state of sin and has not the will to amend his life prays in vain. As our Lord said, St John chapter 9, we know that God does not hear sinners. But if the sinner repents of his sins and is resolved to be converted, he obtains by his prayers the grace of God as the publican in the temple did. For a sacrifice to God is an afflicted spirit, a contrite and humbled heart, a God thou would not despise. So says so Psalm 50, uh, verses 19 and following. So apart from that, we must participate with great confidence. With great confidence, St Gregory the Great and St Mimertus ordered these original rogation processions to be made. In imitation of their great confidence, let us also hope and pray that God will protect us from all temporal calamities as far as it is conducive to our eternal salvation. 
but as his sinful and guilty children, we address our prayers with the confidence of the merits of our Saviour, asking him to grant our prayers through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also invoke in the litany the, all the saints, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the holy angels and apostles, bishops, martyrs, confessors, holy virgins and widows. In a word, all the saints and all the elect of God to intercede with him for us. And there can be no doubt of the effectiveness of such a prayer. And lastly, it was with great sentiments of gratitude that our hearts should be filled when we participate in such possessions. We should be truly thankful to God that he has mercifully spared us from all our punishments that we have really deserved. So we have examined today, of course, in our reflection, the two questions, why and how, we ought to take part in such processions, particularly the Regation Days this coming week. They are of a very ancient date in the church and hence should be highly esteemed by all who call themselves Catholic. They are Christian in their purpose and most, be most beneficial in their effects. Reasons enough for us to esteem them and assist at them with great diligence. But that they may be profitable to all of you, we must accompany them in the spirit of penance with true devotion that God will look down upon us with the eyes of mercy and the words of Christ may be verified and fulfilled in all of you. Ask and you shall receive. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost.